bring you a course in electronics that would be practical. And of course, if you want to know more about this, we have a website called tvecourse.com. All the courses are absolutely free. You don't have to pay anything to watch the courses. This is to help you learn about electronics because electronics has always been very fascinating to me. Uh, lots of people, you know, don't understand my fascination with it, but I grew up with electronics and, you know, when I was a kid I used to be up on the roof building antennas because it was always a thrill for me to figure out how I could get a, a television station from a hundred miles away if I just built the right antenna and put it up a little further. And so, um, you know, I, I want to help with a new generation of people that understand basic electronics because a lot of people are getting into computer electronics and are getting into specializations, but they don't really understand the basics like I learned it and like we used to know back from the, you know, the 70s. And I'm thinking of the people that, that taught me that were from the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, and they really got down into the nuts and bolts of electronics. Um, and so this is a practical electronics course. And what I mean by practical is something that allows you to do something. You know, uh, there's a lot of theory, and I want to touch on theory, but I want to impart on people the ability to go out and do something right away with the knowledge that I've given them. How to repair flat panel televisions. Flat panel displays are built in three basic types. Plasma, LCD, LED. Flat panel displays have these common failures within the first five years of use. 82% Electrolytic capacitor failure, usually in the power supply. 7% fluorescent lamp failure, only in LCD displays. 3% connection problems, bad solder joints or loose connectors. 2% other problems. Learning how to repair bad capacitors and switching power supplies will teach us how to repair almost 90% of all flat panel television failures. The usual symptoms of electrolytic capacitor failure in a power supply is the television will not turn on. First off, some theory. What is a capacitor? The next thing I want to talk about is a capacitor. Now a capacitor is basically two plates of a conductor separated by an insulator. Now the purpose of a capacitor is to store a charge because of the law of charges like charges do what y'all remember they they repel unlike charges attract so if I put a negative charge on one plate of this capacitor and a pos it makes a positive charge on the other it will store a charge this particular capacitor is called an electrolytic capacitor it's basically aluminum foil and it, they put fish oil in here as an insulator and it's rated in farads and it has a voltage that you can't exceed without it breaking down. It will not have, you can't have current flow through a capacitor, but you can have uh, signal flow through a capacitor. This is a paper capacitor. This is one of the earliest capacitors that they would make. I got this out of a 1930 radio just to show it. It is aluminum foil with paper in between wrapped in a coil. And they made these two plates to make a capacitor. It has a resistor soldered to it. Here's two more examples of early paper and foil capacitors. These two are ceramic capacitors. Ceramic capacitors have two plates and a ceramic material in between. They're typically uh, lower uh, sizes in farads. A capacitor is an energy storage device that is used to smooth out voltages if in parallel with the supply. It removes ripple from DC and will pass AC while blocking DC if mounted in series with the supply. Every capacitor has two important ratings, the capacitance rating in farads and the breakdown voltage rating. Capacitance is a way of saying how much energy the capacitor can hold. The voltage rating is the maximum voltage that can be applied to a capacitor before it explodes. 
Capacitance is usually expressed in microfarads. When you replace a capacitor, you want to use the same capacitance rating or very close. The voltage rating must be the same or more than the replaced capacitor. The voltage rating does not say what voltage a capacitor has, but rather it says what voltage will destroy the capacitor. It is usually a good idea to replace a capacitor with a new one with a slightly higher voltage rating. In switching power supplies, high frequency electrolytic capacitors are sometimes used. When they are, the replacement must also be a high frequency capacitor. Electrolytic capacitors have a polarity with a positive and negative side, and the replacement capacitor must be replaced with the same polarity positions as the removed capacitor. An electrolytic capacitor that has failed usually has a bulged top. An oily substance around it are holes in its top or sides with oil leaking from it. Do not confuse the leaking oil from a capacitor with the silicon used to mount the capacitor. The oil in a capacitor is a fish oil, and broken capacitors will smell fishy. If a capacitor has a voltage rating of over 70 volts, it can have a charge on it that can shock you. Over 150 volt rating in volts, the shock can be fatal. After, the pa after power is removed from the television, shorting these high voltage capacitors with a 5K ohm resistor or a screwdriver will discharge the capacitor and make the printed circuit board safe to handle. One of the best ways to repair a switching power supply with bad capacitors is to use an ESR meter for in-circuit testing of electrolytic capacitors. The ESR meter is basically an AC ohm meter with special scales and protective circuitry. It provides a continuous reading of series resistance in electrolytic capacitors. It operates at 100 kilohertz to keep the capacitive reactance factor near zero. The remaining series resistance is due to the electrolyte between the capacitor plates and indicates the state of dryness. Capacitor termination problems also show up plainly due to the continuous ohmic reading. A good electrolytic capacitor should always read very close to zero ohms on an ESR meter. Checking all electrolytic capacitors on a printed circuit board of a power supply and replacing the bad capacitors repairs the power supply 90% of the time. To demonstrate, we will repair a Samsung 52-inch flat-screen, flat-panel television. You will need a soldering iron, screwdrivers, solder, solder wick, needle-nose pliers, a wet cloth or sponge, diagonal cutter, and a dental pick. A soldering station with a soldering iron mount is desirable. The first thing is to remove the flat-panel TV from the wall. Set the monitor face down on a table that has a carpet or cloth on it to protect the face of the monitor. Then remove the mounting bracket. First thing is you've got to remove all this bracket. It has four screws. Mm -hmm. Four screws. Okay, you can go ahead and pull it off now. Clean the dust and dirt off the back of the monitor. But I take big lights and I take them apart and I lay them out and uh -huh. I take it apart. Then locate and remove the screws that mount the back panel of the monitor. It is always a good idea to place the removed screws in a cup so they will not get lost. <clears throat> Lift the back panel off and set it aside. Come on, there's a... Is that a screw there, a screw here, one here, one there. Oh. I got two. Okay. Two? You still have <laughs> one. This will look a lot better than the guy with the, with the, with the three year old on it. <laughs> 
Well, I learned. I watched his video and I learned. Video? Yeah. I don't know how many people he helped fix their TVs. Hmm. Yeah, these are tricky ones. Yeah. Those See are tricky. Remove the metal cage covering the power supply. One, two, this one three, you're four, four, probably eight screws. Eight screws. And these are smaller. Smaller than. Put them all in the little cup. You have a magnetic screwdriver. It, it didn't work well ago. <laughs> it didn't work well ago? It didn't make it do it well ago. I was, something I'm touching is magnetizing it. Okay, all together there was uh, one, two. Oh, there's three. one here too. One, two, three. Yeah, that four. one you didn't have to take loose. I took one loose here. Yeah, let's see. Okay, okay. And it's not part of the okay, case. Okay, okay now let's let, let me get a bit lift up the case and just set it aside. Okay, here's our power supply. And these two, these two right here can shock you. They're dangerous. And over here, we see the ones that have popped. That's where the problem is, right there. This one, see? that one, and that one. Yeah. You see how they popped up? Mm -hmm. The two right there. Yep. See the one to the left of that? that? Yep, yep. Look, those are those are leaking out. And see, lots of these are bad. Like this one on the corner toward me is bad. Yep. Yeah. Those are bad. Okay, so get a marks a lot and mark the top of all of those, would you, Mick? It's in that little connector. Marks a lot. Uh-huh. Okay. Just... Just push on it. Just push on it. Yeah. <laughs> Like a <laughs> so mark it with just uh, yeah right here yeah mark the top of that we know that's bad, bad. that and, and then the one that's over here that's popped one. up the electrolytic capacitor with bulges in the top are bad remove the connectors from the power supply board care should be taken when removing connectors usually there is some form of latch Remember where the connectors go, use a marker to mark the board and connectors and make a drawing if necessary. Red. Okay, now watch this. Do this one. Hold on, let me see your hand. Hold on. Like that. Okay. And right here. I don't want to pull it too hard. There's a clip deal. Kind of, huh? That has I have to fiddle with it. <coughs> This one's easy. <coughs> Let me see. Right, yeah, you see. mesh. Here, get that one. Just really mesh on the very top. Yeah. And you get that one. Oh. Okay. This one came from there. This one's being a little difficult, so I'm uh, gently prying it because I don't want to have to repair a connector. There's a little release or something here. Like that. Okay. Oh, okay. There it is. Oh, it's in the back. Press See, it's the sides right there. You press oh, on the sides. sides. See, that's the trick. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. And we got to remember, this one goes here, and then this one goes over there. We don't want to mix them around. This one actually goes to this side. Yeah. And this one goes to this side. Yeah, we don't want to. Right in the. This one right here, that's our main input power. It's got a little okay. release. Can't see how it's okay. Right there. And then we got a ground. See this one this one went like that. And then this is the ground right here. Pull that straight up. So that's got all of that, right? Mm -hmm. Everything's then we gotta remember where it went back. And so now we take our our fill. Remove screws holding the board. 
When removing a power supply board from a chassis, only use one hand. This will prevent an electrical charge from going through your heart. Make sure no other part of your body touches the board or chassis on the television. Back, and so now we take our, our Phillips and we disconnect all of these screws. Remembering that these two capacitors in this area can shock Fuck you. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah, they're the same as the other ones. I was telling them that uh, that there was a guy who fixed this on his uh, bed with a three-year-old as a helper. And it worked. And it worked. So we probably have a good chance at it, I hope. <laughs> I need a three-year-old, but, you know. Mm, I ain't got one available right now. <laughs> okay, sometimes there's a screw in the middle. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let me... It looks like... Not. I don't think so. Okay, when you have an electrical charge on a board, you want to lift by one of these heat sinks and hold it by the heat sink. Mm. Because if you touch the bottom, yep. you get electrocuted. Okay, so what we're going to do is, is set that aside and then set this aside and use a table to work on. Discharge the high voltage capacitors. Just to be safe, I'm going to discharge them by doing that and this. And that discharges those capacitors where okay. we're not going to get injured when we're holding the board. Not that you want to just play with the board when you're done. It is a good idea to mark the placement of a bad capacitor on the bottom of the printed circuit board. Okay, here's our bad area right here. Let me see, one, two, three. Now, that you notice all these capacitors, they have uh, a negative side. See the little stripes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what I always do, where's the marker, right here? On the board, if you put these capacitors in backwards and then put power to the board, it will destroy the board and the capacitor. So I'm marking that's the negative side, that's the negative side. And these two here, I'm just gonna mark up here noting that the negative side is that way, which is pretty easy because the negatives on all these big capacitors except for this one is going up. These are going up and we need to remember that, you know, that which side is the negative. And we know this capacitor and this capacitor is bad for sure. And those are all a thousand microfarad at 10 volts, which is insufficient to fix this. And, you know, I could put 1,000 microfarad at 10 volt back in, it'd just go bad in 1,500 hours anyway. So what I did was I went to Radio Shack, and they're $1.50, <laughs> and, uh, or $1.07, and I got these, they're a little bit bigger, but they're 35 volts. See, 35 volt. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, 15 volts more capacity than these here. They're not high frequency. I wish they sold high frequency, but they don't. Okay. Well, now we're going to have to begin. See, on this side, and, you know, we might want to replace more than just these three, but um, we have to determine where they are. So I'll take my marker, and here's a bad one here. So I'm going to mark it there. That tells me it's that one. And then here's the bad one here, and I'm going to mark it. That's where it goes on the bottom. Here's the other bad one here. And these two are working in parallel. So this, this two, and then uh, this one here, right? No, this one here. Yeah, this one here. Never mind that one. So right there, those three we know are bad. I don't know how many more we need to replace. I might replace a few of the other ones, like this one here. This one here is in the same parallel as this one, and it just didn't go bad yet. So I'm going to replace it too. Um, these two here are different values. These are 750, so I'm going to mess with that. And these are different values. Now this one here uh, is the same value, but it hasn't gone out, and I think it's a different circuit. So I'm not going to mess with it. We'll just mess with the ones that just that point. went bad, like this one. See? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So we're going to do this one, this one, this one, and this one. So let me go get a power uh, cord over here and we'll hook, heat up a solder and iron and start from there. <clears throat> Plug in your soldering iron, <clears throat> and then you always set it, and you always put something underneath it so that it won't flop over and burn. Because mm -hmm. it takes a while for it to heat up. Sometimes I tighten this little screw. Now this is an inexpensive soldering iron, just so that shows everybody can do it. Solder. I'll put a little cloth down here underneath the iron that's wet. Of course most people would have like a little fancy holder, <laughs> holder but I'm just showing you can do it with cheap. See this rag's wet so I can Clean. do a little cleaning. I'll sniff it to see if it's hot. You gotta be careful. <laughs> Burn your nose. You wanna go, when it gets hot enough it'll start taking this solder. It's not hot enough. I get a little time. You always got to keep a, your attention on where this is. Now what I did earlier when, when you were here, I, I have a meter that's different from this one, but I just testing these. Make sure they're all dead. Well, there's actually a, what they call them, uh, a AC, AC ohm meter. And I can, if I didn't know what was wrong with this board from looking and, and getting people's information from before, I'd go on all those electrolytic capacitors one by one one by one and I'd see the ones that didn't have conduction on the AC ohmmeter yeah and that would be a bad capacitor be a bad capacitor and, and I, I've gone on boards like this before mm -hmm. and I've just you know I didn't know which one was bad but it's a switch in power supply so I knew it was probably a capacitor check all the electrolytics replace all the bad ones mark them with a marks marks a lot pull them out and then uh, and put in new ones and it, all, it usually fixes it 99% of the time and if I did the job right, if I didn't make a bad solder joint or something. Mm -hmm. Let's see if this is going to melt solder now. Look, it's melting. Oh, yeah. It's melting. Okay, that's got fresh solder on it, so it'll work. And now, we want to clean it. See, that's like, look how clean and shiny that is. See? It's got to be clean and shiny. Did you already change them? No. Oh. It's, we're at the beginning of changing them. That's a process. Oh. <laughs> How's it look? Yeah, it looks fine. This is solder wick. This is what you use to remove solder, solder braid. And so we got them marked here and here and here and here. Now what I'm going to do is I want to add a little bit of solder to these connections just so it'll flow easily when I go to remove it. Don't have to do that, but... See that one, and that one, and this one. You got to be careful because you can actually burn uh, the trace off the board and, and you have to fix it then. Or you can make a solder point that um, won't work. Still not quite hot enough. It's needing to give me some more heat. Sometimes it's as simple as this isn't screwed in tight enough here. And now it's got a better connection. You see it starts to heat up a lot more after I do that. You gotta get it pretty hot to pull the solder out. Now what I'm putting this extra solder on here for is so that when I go to wick it up, it'll, it'll readily come out. You don't have to do that, but these looked a little dry. Maybe had some rosin on top of it or something. Okay, then you get your solder wick. And you hold it down on top like this. Some people use solder suckers. And you'll see the solder will start to flow and fill up the wick. Mm -hmm. Like that. See, and it made a... Yep. I don't know if that's good enough. I'd have to... I don't want to do that one. 
that's not it. And you have to work with these a lot to get that solder out of there. So where do you buy the, the, the wick? Oh, any Radio Shack will sell them. Oh, okay. And I may have to wick it again after I straighten up the leads. You have to work with this. Right now, I'm just getting all the solder off. People say, well, you're getting the solder off, you just put it on, but that makes it flow <laughs> a lot better. You see, it is making a slide hole. Mm hmm. Interesting. I watched the video. <laughs> <laughs> These really aren't designed to be unsoldered. That's the hassle with it. It's designed to replace the whole board. Why? It's designed to replace the whole board. Lots of times that's all they did was, uh, you know, if I damage this, I, I have lots of levels I can go to to repair it. Yeah. But I'm trying not to damage it at all so I don't have to repair it. And uh, it's a challenge because, um, you know, it really isn't designed to be unsoldered. We're getting closer. Okay. We're trying to loosen these up a little bit. Lots of people are screaming, if you had a better soldering iron, this would work. One thing I often do is um, come underneath and pry on it. Like pull it and pull it to one side, see? One side. Mm -hmm. And then I'm loosening it by doing that. And then here, I'm loosening this one. Without pulling so hard, I break the capacitor. I pulled that out, see? Mm -hmm. See it popped out from the bottom. This in here, same thing. Pulling toward one side. And then it comes out. Pulling that and that came out, see? Now we have to go in here. And these two are a little harder to get to. Like that, and then let that. Yeah, while that's let the solder melt. That came out, and then there's this one here. That came out, and this in here. And that came out. See, so we got all four of them out. Now the next step is to clean up the holes where um, you can put a new one through. So once that's out, you put that down on top of the hole and then suck all the solder out of the hole. The hole is, is plated all the way through. 
So it'll suck the solder through the top and the bottom. Do the same thing over here. See how that came out? Right here. Suck that all out where it's clean. See how that's clean? Mm -hmm. Got a hole all the way through. So we got a little bit of dirt here. <coughs> Lots of people go through all this work and put the capacitor in backwards and blow out the board. See how that's a nice hole there? Got a hole, yeah. Okay, now, now you all know how to do that. I'll let you do one of them. I'll come in here and make sure that I can go through this hole here. See? Mm -hmm. That went right in. That went right in. This went right in there. This went right in. This went right in here. No, this one's not good. This one's good. This one's good. And this one isn't. These two need to be touched up again. Mm -hmm. Another thing that's neat is on the on the writing on this, you can see they have a plus, yeah. and so it tells you the polarity of these. It's already written on the board. If you really forget, so now we got to come and get these two that I couldn't get that to, the tester to let that go through. A little probe in there. Now that looks good. Okay. And see, I want to put this, keep that from overheating. Okay, now we'll go here again. Make sure we can get there and there. Here and here, here and there, and there and there. Okay, and I'm going to take a little cloth. It's got not much, not a lot of cleaning on it, but some, and clean off this um, stuff I got on here from the rosin and everything. So that's a clean surface, as clean as you can get. We we got a lot of spare rosin here. You want that to dry out good too. Okay. Next step is uh, get your new capacitors. You can do this now. Don't they have a fancy opener on this somehow. Don't look like it. Yeah. Or it goes down the side maybe. Yeah. yeah. There's it. I missed the obvious. Down the side. Down the side. Okay. Replacing four. I think that's all we need to replace. I didn't see any more obvious ones. Okay, so we're going to come over here. That's all good there. And look here, it shows you. Negative, negative. Not some don't do that. They don't. They don't tell you what negative, negative. So it shows us here, and it, it matches the marks we put in. So I'm putting in a bigger capacitor. This is the ones we took out were a thousand microfarads, ten volts. I'm putting in a thousand microfarads, thirty-five volts, because that way that means they won't be replaced again in the lifetime of the unit. 
See negative side? Mm -hmm. Goes toward that. So put that there. And I bend it a little bit so they don't pop back out. And then the same thing, you gotta watch this polarity. You get one of these in backwards, it blows out everything. Just so you know, these are capacitors, these are electrolytic capacitors, these little tall ones like this. That's an inductor, those are diodes, that's resistors, this is a heat sink for transistors, transformers, transformers, these are transformers. Um, these are relays right here, relays, capacitors, that little light bulb shows you if you have AC voltage, bigger capacitors, transformer, transformer, high voltage transformer. Okay, put this in. Polarity's right. You always got to have your polarity right. Same thing here. Okay, we'll turn it over. Can you see it okay? Yeah, oh yeah. Is it a close up? Now these right here, we want to make sure these are all 1,000 microfarads, see? That they're 1,000 microfarad at 10. Mm -hmm. We took out 1,000 microfarad. That's 1,000 microfarad at 10. And we replaced them with 1,000 microfarads at 35. That, and the 35 is the voltage rating. It tells what's the maximum voltage it takes where it pops. So I'm taking it further away from the point where it's going to pop. Solder it in. Solder should flow like a water or liquid. If it doesn't flow like a liquid, it's not making a connection. See this little bulbed up, so I'm going to let it flow a little more. Can you see how that, that works like a magnifying glass? How does that look? Because I can't see all that clearly because the smoke is coming my direction. Okay. See, that's not wanting to go up, so I'm going to take this and make sure that doesn't fall. And I'm going to examine this with a to make sure that it's all connected good. See, that's solid. That's solid. That's solid. That's solid. You can. You come in and cut. <sighs> so you want to make sure these are short because if they're too long they'll short out against the stuff below it when you set that back in there. Okay, we're done with the soldering iron part. So I'm going to unplug it, but I'm going to let it set, cool off.
just measure it again to make sure This shows me I have continuity to the rest of the board. Now the solder joints are good. Because if this was a bad solder joint, it wouldn't have conductivity. Okay. Um, so I got all that done. I'm going to flip the board over. And I'm going to just like make these where they're at the right level. And I make sure that all the polarities are right. How about that? For, <clears throat> screw the PC board for the power supply back on the television chassis. Reconnect the connectors. Make sure they are in the correct places and the wires dressed so they are not pinched by the cage when it's installed. Get out of this too much data in it. There. We found the screws. Mm hmm. Got them separated. The little bitty ones right there. Okay. I'll take a few and you take a few. We took this one out. Nope. Well, I think we put that in when we put the cage in. No, it didn't have to come out. On the cage, the cage was whatever he thought it did, but it didn't mm. need to. That's where that other, that one screw came from. I don't okay. know where it came from. Now I know. Yeah, I don't want to end up with any... any... <laughs> okay, so yeah. that's good. This is good. This is good. This is good. Okay, let's put that... Now it's over here, isn't it? Like this? Yeah, like that. Right there. Yeah. I picked it up right the first time. So you got to make sure that the wires go through there. Because that's high voltage. You don't want them arcing. If we could have, like we crimped it under here, it would have been arcing. Yep. And then you would. And have this is space over here because that's high voltage. You don't want that. Burn the whole TV up. Well, you just don't want anything metal to arc to it. Did I put that where the That's right. cage goes? That right there goes there. Then you got one more right beside it. Okay. You have two there. Okay, where's the is but I'm not doing any of the cagings, the cages screws. Then I need that one to go. I mean uh, no we're okay. I'm okay. So we'll go here. Gotta make sure these wires are all loose and not cut underneath that cage when we put it in. All of them. Okay. Everything looks good. Replace the back. Make sure it aligns up with the connectors and screw holes. Reinstall the mount bracket. I might better get them.
missing. Oh, that one. Yeah, it is. That is the one missing. I got the other one in my back pocket. That's missing. That's the right one. Plug power in and test. Hold on, hold on. Okay, no. Is it red? Yes, it's red. Okay, go in there. Like that. That means it's working. It wouldn't make a display before, so we fixed it. Isn't that something? <laughs> <laughs> it's working. Clean the front, remove fingerprints using cloth provided by the manufacturer. Is, I hope. <laughs> There's one of them. Wow, look at that. What do you buy this at? Home? It comes uh, with the TV. It comes with TV? Mm-hmm. A factory repairman will swap boards. This one, this one, it's pop. Yeah, right there, pop, pop, pop. Oh, you just swap the board. I just love to watch this circuitry be worked on. That way I learn. Are these here, will these shock you if they're charged? Oh yes. So once you heard that and you saw the lights come on, you knew.